What's up, everybody? Welcome to another webisode of How to D -D 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 Dig with Ricky Analog. Today's episode, we're going to talk about convertible debt. So let's get into it, guys. As always, this is only for informational and educational purposes. Trading is risky. You need to know the, tr the risk inherent with it. So please familiarize yourselves, guys, with this disclaimer. It should be in the description of the YouTube video. And let's get right into it. So the first example we're going to use, guys, is MNKD. And boy, look at this first filing I have up. This is from October 2nd, 2007. And that's how far back MNKD's problems go. Um, let's just look first at the 10Q. This is their most recent one. Let's see if I have it up in another file. Here you go. Here's where the convertible debt is something that is worth noting. Okay. Look at the total liabilities, 250 million. And their total assets are only 45 million. So if if that's not the biggest red flag ever, I don't know what is. Um, you cannot be that leveraged of a company. So let's just talk about what is what is um, convertible debt versus uh, common or preferred. So uh, this is the balance sheet, guys. And as you know, you have a balance a balance sheet equation, which is assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity or deficit in this case. <clears throat> so basically anything that is common stock or preferred is part of this stockholder equity or deficit down here. Anything that is convertible promissory notes, convertible bonds, com convertible notes, that's all up here in the liabilities part. Now, uh, you will oftentimes hear people talk about the requirements to stay listed on NASDAQ and you'll hear people reference things like minimum stockholder equity being deficient in that area and oftentimes companies that are may convert their debt to common stock which decreases this as long as their cash stays the same it decreases this and increases this meaning it helps them get their stockholder equity up which is one of their ways of wiggling out of that um, nasdaq delisting uh, criteria so that's not what I wanted to talk about with mankind I actually just want to point out how their incredibly high amounts of debt are what what crushes their runs every time you see these these big runs and there's a reason why short sellers get so excited when they see something like MNKD start to run and you know it, you can look at the chart and see why but you want to know the underworkings of why it's a lot a lot of it has to do with their financings and their convertible debt so let's go back to october 2007 alfred mann he is the principal shareholder and the uh, i don't know if he still is but he may be i i pff, haven't read on their um their executive team lately but may still be their ceo but his company has another company, the Alf, the Man Group, which entered into an agreement with MNKD a long time ago, basically to give them a loan to borrow up to $350 million. It's a ton of money, right? Well, over the years, this money has been tapped numerous times. And actually, the cool thing about this example is um, there, there's two different groups of people that have been loaning mankind money to finance their charade and so we're going to talk about the other one in a minute but this one the man group it's actually not convertible debt <laughs> it's actually just a loan right but i'm going to show you how they kind of use some tricky little ways to uh, navigate this to pay down that debt without paying cash right so let's look at this is that the most recent 10q and it goes into like right here. So it's talking about the related party arrangements. $72 million is what's left on the principal amount of the loan um, from way back. And they've been, like I said, they've been borrowing forever. So you'll see <clears throat> what they do here is in June 2017, they uh, enter into an agreement to capitalize $10.7 million of the unpaid interest. Um, and then they take an advance from the loan for 20 million, which is the remaining amount uh, for borrowing. So they have a ton of money out on loan from them. And uh, 
let's see, where is it right here? So March 2018, um, they amend the arrangement. So they extend the maturity date. And you'll notice a lot of the amendments, that's what they do is they kick the can down the road, guys. Um, but they always there's always other things they do. Um, let's read this. So permit the principal and any accrued and unpaid interest under this arrangement to be converted at the option of the man group at any time preceding the stated maturity date into shares of the company's common stock at a conversion rate of 250 shares per $1,000 or another, another way of saying that's $4 per share. So right there, it went from, it wasn't convertible debt. Now it pretty much is convertible debt guys. Um, there also is another thing they do where it's like, even if it wasn't convertible debt, you'll see right here that same day they, they did this amended and restated arrangement, they do what's called a stock purchase agreement. So, hey, man group, would you like to buy uh, 3 million shares of our stock at $2.72? Sure, but you owe us a ton of money. So how about this? How about you just cancel $8.2 million of the loan and we'll take that 3 million shares from you, right? So that was on March 11th. Let's go look at the charts. You'll see right in this sweet spot, right around here. And so they give them 3 million shares and then the price just falls off the, the face of the planet. Now, I don't, obviously a lot of um, fundamental analysis and looking at charts is speculation as to what happened. So we don't know if the price decline was from that. You can see that, um, the typical volume uh, was about a million to two million shares on those in those uh, time frames. So it could have they could have been dumping in there and just crushing this, <clears throat> which wouldn't surprise me considering you know the man group probably just at some stages of this just wants to get some of that cash back out, but it doesn't necessarily mean they did. They had this at two. What did we say at um, two dollars and? 72 cents so there is the chance they were holding for this pop here um and we're liquidating closer to three but i think more likely story is that they were just selling as soon as they got the three million shares which helped which explains why the price fell off a cliff right um so let's go back to the filings and you'll see um ba -ba -ba -ba. Well, just, I guess what I did want to point out, I'm trying, sorry if it seems uh skippy guys, but a lot of this is me trying to remember what I wanted to point out about certain aspects of this. But um, just keep in mind that here they have debt. A huge, there's still $72 million of debt, right? And it's obvious what they do to pay it off. They're not giving them cash, right? They're just giving them shares. And you also have to take into account that this the the guy that's the head of man group is also explicitly and intrinsically linked to the company so there's just there's no way that this guy is going to lose money on his loan right so then we're going to get into the number i told you there's two different groups of people that have given loans to this guy or to uh, mnkd the other group is deerfield and let's see here. Where does it say? So I'll just read it to you guys. In addition to the man group loan arrangement described in note six, the company's outstanding borrowings consisted of 19 million of senior convertible notes due in 2021. And as well as 14 and a half million uh, of a facility financing obligation, which consisted of the following uh, 12 million, Blah, blah, blah. This is all. So basically, um, it's just a bunch of different loans. And these are all from this company called Deerfield. And they call it the Deerfield facility. So here it says these borrowings are further described below. And you're going to go in here and you're going to read about them. And you're going to see, look, basically what it's saying is there is a ton of debt due to this Deerfield company. And there's no set price at what it converts at 
Um, remember, this isn't common or preferred. It's convertible debt or convertible notes. And it's split into two different things, the 2019 notes and the tranche B notes. But what they do is they just keep lumping them together and they keep amending them. And when they amend them, what they're doing is they're lowering the price of what they convert at and they're also paying some down with common. Basically, that's where the conversion feature uh, is applicable. So, da, 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 da. multiple tranches of notes that provide for aggregate borrowings of 120 million in the 2019 notes and 20 million in tranche B notes. So that's 140 million dollars to go along with the 350 million they had from the man group, right? So it's obvious, guys, when when you get big runs in MNKD, it's this debt that is going to crush the runs. So you can read about it here. They break it down. This is the latest 10Q, and they're telling you on what date did they amend the agreement and what they did with it. So, look, we'll repay $4 million of the tranche Bs, and we'll pay a million of, um, or let's see here. <coughs> repay $4 million principal amount under the tranche B. Exchange $1 million principal amount under the tranche B for 900,000 shares and exchange 5 million of the principal amount of the 2019 notes for 4.3 million shares at a price of a dollar 15 per share. So that was uh, 2017. Um, I actually don't have the chart up for that. I could go back that far, but <coughs> you'll see what they're doing here is they're paying down that debt with common. Now let's just fast forward a little to 2018. And you'll see all these things. They look every time you see a date, they're amending it and they're paying some down. So like, look, three million shares here, one point eight million shares here, and they're telling you the price that they have dropped the conversion to. So this was at two seventy two. Keep going down a little more. Here's a dollar ninety six. Keep going down a little more. Look, we're at a dollar eighty. And you'll notice the trend here, right? The, they keep lowering the price at what they're giving the shares out to. And so like now you have these guys that have tons and tons of shares um, all throughout the basically Here's a dollar 78. And then you get this run like this and look prices all, they have shares all up in this range. Now they did have some shares from back here on, I think it was June 8th. And then mysteriously got some volume on June 22nd and the price sure wasn't able to move much, right? Yeah, they could have sold there or maybe they just knew something was coming. I mean, you got to understand these guys talk, right? So they're in conversations with the companies, whether it's done legally or not is completely debatable. Put your tinfoil hats on guys and you make a judgment call, but you wonder why this, this volume comes in and it gets stuffed so hard it's this debt guys it's this convertible debt okay so that is why mnkd makes short sellers get hard as a mofo when they see the run starting because they know how this story ends all right so the other one i wanted to talk about was amrh which is funny because um let me pull up the chart for them real quick these guys were otc <laughs> They had, let's see, where's the filing? So on March 2017, they issued convertible, unse convertible unsecured promissory notes in the amount of $1.25 million to four investors, two of which were insiders. One was a director and the other one became a director later. So you got to understand that the insider knowledge is key to this. You know, these guys know the company and they know what's on the horizons. So they know that what they're doing is going to be profitable. So if we read a little further, you're going to see they don't they don't state the uh, and you can always go in here and read the actual contract from the uh, convertible the issue of the convertible debt. But the AK pretty much lays it out for you right here anyway. So the notes are convertible in the shares of our common stock at a conversion price of one of two things. Okay. In the event they uplist from the OTC to the NASDAQ, <clears throat> the price will be 68% of whatever the price per share they uplist to is. Or if there's no uplisting, it'll be, I think the 20, where is it? Let's see. 
the weighted average closing price of the 20 days prior to December 31st. So then you kind of got to think, I mean, if you knew about this back in March, you would have been following the company and you would have saw that they uplisted. Um, you can always look at it in their 10K. I thought I had it open. Let's see. Do I have their 10K open? Um, da, 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 da. Doesn't look like it. Well, you can probably find it here in their 10Q. Um, sorry, but um, I know in here somewhere it's going to say it uh, that they uplisted in. These are business combinations, so it's not in here. Just keep on going. Here's the convertible notes. Uh, well, right here, it's, it flat out says it. The convertible notes are convertible in the shares at conversion price of 280. And if you go and look at the chart, guys, um, you can see where they, th this is all the way back. Um, this is where they opened up. They Uplisted at four dollars and eleven cents a share, and if you take four eleven and multiply it by 0 0.68, it's two dollars and eighty cents. So you take the one point two five million dollars they had plus any um, interest, it was eight uh, percent per annum. So you can say that like, um, let's see. Maybe it was a uh, oops. So you could say it was like uh, one one point two million dollars. Did I get the wrong? Did I punch in the? Sorry, guys. I'm using a calculator over here and. Yeah, I did the wrong number, sorry. If they had 8% of interest, it would have been $1.3 million, $1.35 million of uh, what was owed on the convertible notes. And so if you divide that by $2.80, they were given close to 500,000 shares. And so you can see um, 500,000 shares at $2.80 if they, if they were the ones selling on this day when this thing opened up at 973, um, let's see, 9.7, let's just assume they sold at the open. That's $4.7 million and they, for what they basically gave 1.25 million for. So that's like a, that's a huge rate of return on their investment guys. And uh, <clears throat> so you can see how just knowing the conversion prices and how this convertible debt is basically a huge amount of overhead for these companies. It's something that's important to add to your arsenal when doing fundamental analysis. It's not enough to just go locate warrants in common and preferred. You need to know about the debt structure. You need to know if the debt is convertible. Um, you'll notice these guys actually had, they had some other promissory notes from acquisitions. They were just buying companies with, uh, let's see if I have it up still. There, yeah, this this one here is them buying company a company with uh, unsecured promissory notes, but those aren't convertible. So you have to understand the difference between convertible and non-convertible, um, and you have to know you have to read through the filings and see the history of how these companies have in the past dealt with debt. And uh, there is a reason why um, convertible debt can can actually be quite a bit of overhead supply especially in cases like MNKD where we're talking 250 million dollars of liabilities, 72 million from the the man group and then you have another 20 million from the Deerfield credit facility. So just make sure you guys don't forget about debt. It's not always just about stockholders equity uh, acting as overhead supply guys. Hopefully this has been short sweet to the point adding to your um, knowledge base and how you guys do your digging. And uh, 
as always, guys, I really hope I added value. So uh, till the next episode, peace.